like to explain uh, why we are going to be talking about garbage and what each of us can do about it. I asked how many of you have suffered from drought, flood or unseasonal weather in the last year or two. I asked how many have had a family member absent from work or from school because of tummy upsets, flyborne illness. Yes. That's what we can all prevent by every single one of us doing a very small and simple thing. Don't chuck plastic in your food waste that you discard. And preferably, don't discard your food waste tied in a plastic bag. Uh, the reason is that it's all ending up in mountains of uh, garbage, which you can see outside every one of our 6,000 urban local bodies, cities and towns. And it was not always like this. From Vedic times till the, the 1980s, uh, food waste from villages would be given to animals, domestic animals, and what was left over ended up in the fields to enrich the soil. Even urban food wastes were collected by farmers when they brought their produce to town. They would empty all the street bins of uh, food wastes because there was no plastic at that time and take it to their farms from composting. Only in the 90s when plastic, mostly carry bags, entered our lives and we began chucking the plastic out into the food waste and out mixed together, this became unusable by the farmers because the uh, plastic wouldn't allow the rain go in, to go in or the seeds to germinate through. So, uh, it became an unwanted waste and uh, the cities didn't know what to do with it. So, they just moved it outside their city limit and started building their waste dumps higher and higher. Now, when these uh, waste needs air and oxygen to decompose nicely, like leaves on a forest floor, if you have airless heaps, uh, you will end up like a rotten tomato in a plastic bag instead of drying in the sun, in the open. So it generates leachate, a stinky black liquid, which goes into the groundwater and pollutes even bore wells for uh, several kilometers around for as long as 30 or 40 years. It also produces airless, smelly gases like ammonia, urinal smell, and hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell, which is a huge problem for the villagers around. And these smells also attract thousands of flies, which are also a huge problem for everybody. And worst of all, when it, there are airless heaps, it generate the waste decomposes not to water vapor and carbon dioxide, but it decomposes to methane, which is a greenhouse gas causing our erratic climate. And all this is just because we were chucking plastic into our food waste. Now, uh, if we can prevent that, we can prevent creating new airless hills because then the food waste can be composted as before. Uh, but what are we to do about the hills of waste which we already have? I'd like to uh, explain how that is done. The big heaps are sliced by earth movers front, back and across the top to create deep slices where the air can go in and the leachate can flow out. 
uh, which is stored in the heap. We'll watch the video now. Uh, this is a video of uh, Gurugram Faridabad's dumping ground, where just three years of uh, waste was piled, 25 lakh tons of it, 100 feet high, covering 15 acres. The entire site was covered in leachate, which was treated first. Floating waste was manually removed with rakes. After the waste was completely cleared, Ragini's special leachate treatment biocultures were dripped into all the leachate pools. This is where bioculture is being dripped into huge pools of leachate. And aeration is needed for the microbes. Here we see the mountain of waste being brought down in steps into terraces. was pulled down to form step-like levels called terraces. And then deep cuts are slashed in the sides of the trench and across the top so that we end up with uh, well aerated slices is necessary of every stage waste. Of waste. Uh, and uh, these are what are called windrows, where the breeze can blow through parallel uh, heaps. And this is how the mountain was left after 10 months, thanks to Ragini Jain and her biocultures. This really did not require a tender, did not require any additional expense because the amount of uh, earth moving equipment that was used to raise the waste higher and higher up to 100 feet, a half of that equipment was required to form these parallel windrows and turn them once or twice a week for a month. That brought down the moisture content of the waste by 40% from 65 to 25. Brought down the volume of the waste by 40%. So there was place for creating windrows of fresh waste. And now these stabilized windrows which released no more methane, leachate or smell or attracted flies uh, were ready for screening. When the screening is done not of rotted waste, which is just mining of a heap, if it's done on bio-treated, bio-stabilized waste, bio-remediated, then it is called bio-mining. And we get different fractions. The finest fraction is like tea powder, minus four millimeters. It's half soil and half organics. So we call it bio-earth, and it's eagerly taken away free by farmers to enrich their soil. The coarsest fraction is plus 80 millimeter. This is mostly waste cloth, coconut shells, and other combustible things, which is all raw material for RDF, which means refuse-derived fuel. Uh, if you put a heavy blower fan that blows all the light plastic out as the waste is falling, and you get two middle fractions, medium coarse and medium fine, which are mostly inerts. And the uh, Ghazipur mountain in Delhi uh, is planning to send some of this for trial as the embankment, the lowest layer of the National Highway 24 from Delhi to Meerut. So that when all the waste is moved off site, hardly 10 or 15% will be left behind. That can be spread over the whole area. It raises the ground level by half a meter or a meter. And the place is then available for long term, almost lifetime use again for waste processing.
but it's important that the fresh waste which comes, and preferably from all of you now, without plastic in the food waste, uh, but even mixed waste, can be formed, even the fresh waste, into windrows, two meters, max 2.5 meters high, sprayed with composting biocultures to speed up the process. And uh, if it is pure wet waste, all of it can go for fields, the fine one, or orchards, the medium one, or forest mulch and reclaiming uh, salt affected soils and uh, mining overburden revegetation. So almost nothing is left behind at the end. And this is how we can help our whole global family and us. It's the fastest way, uh, most uh, cost effective uh, and simple for India to meet its climate change obligations to reduce methane. Thank you.